it's too much for me myself. So that's the reason I prescribe to Jesus Christ who died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day for my sins. Amen. And all my infirmity. Yes. Amen. Uh, all the formalities out of the way, we will go right into the word. God bless all of you that are on. Turn with me to Luke, the 23rd Recording in progress. chapter. The 23rd chapter, the 30, uh, 32nd through the 30, uh, uh, 30, 34 verse. You all are familiar <clears throat> with this particular uh, uh, passage. You all are familiar with some of the things that went on and uh, led leading to the crucifixion. Amen. And when you prescribe to Christ, you are still getting crucified. You are, even though he are, because he said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free. That's what the hell mother just say. No, there's a cross for me, you, and everyone that prescribed to Christ. Amen. If you if you have it, let me know. Mm -hmm. And it reads as follows. Amen. <clears throat> and there were also two others, two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, it's the one who say him they crucified. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lot. I want to talk about lead me to cavalry. Lead me to cavalry. According to Luke here, <clears throat> gospel. Amen. The parable that is found in the Gospel of Luke demonstrates and shows the concern for the sick, discouraged, bereaved, brokenhearted, and manly the lost. And people that have been trouble in life getting along. So the theme of Luke is Christ the man. Amen. Out of all Christ a man, because he the one that has the answer to all our problem in life. And that's the answer that I can give to people who are going through storms when ran trouble and problem. So Luke present the character career of Christ as answering the conception of a perfect and divine humanity. See, that's what it was all about, all in the beginning. Beauty, righteousness, and truth are exhibited as they meet in Jesus in their full splendor. Savior of all men. I wish I could preach this like I'm feeling it. Redeeming them to a perfect. I think that's why... In Matthew uh, 5 and 48, Jesus challenged his listeners, said, after speaking to them concerning life and things that they may not understand, he said, therefore be ye perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So, uh, uh, he redeeming them to a perfect and cultured manhood. So it stirred me a little, and I began to wonder. So I looked at Calvary, and I noticed that it wasn't always called Calvary. It was just a little hill about 18 foot high called Skull Golgotha. That don't sound so good. I don't, you know, I don't like the way it sounds. 
it had no significance, you know, so it, of any kind. But I noticed something since death had brought about changes and affected so many places and people and lives until later it became uh, cavalry. It brought a new revelation to God, better known to the modern Christian as Mount Calvary. Then I, I had the urge, I wanted to look up a few of the mountains. And as I went down the line, Brother Black, I went down carefully, y'all, and I noticed that almost all of them had uh, represent power and some significance. Mm -hmm. Then I thought in my mind, if the master was standing here and offered to give me a tour around some of these places of significance in history, uh, and ask me which one of these places would I would like to start at. So I think I would start, I would start at Mount Moriah. That's a place where faith, the manifestation of faith had taken place in the hearts of Abraham, Q faith. And and he was found as the father of faith, but I I I I wouldn't stay there. So I would go to uh, Mount Carmel. You know, it, as significant as in my mind as I saw Mount Moriah. Yeah, I would. I would go to Mount Carmel, which is located in Palestine. It was a place where Elijah, as you know, challenged and won the prayer contest between them false prophets of Baal. That was quite a scene, but I couldn't stay there. Amen. I would go to Mount Ebel. One of the two mountains separated by the Valley of Shekinah, which stand 2,600 feet above sea level. It is the place where the blessings of Israel was pronounced, but I wouldn't stay there. I would go to Mount Gerizim, the place across from Mount Ebel where curses were pronounced, but I wouldn't stay there because God blesses and curses not. I would go on over to Mount Gilmore, which stand 1,696 feet above sea level associated with the last conflict between Saul and the Philistine, which result in the defeat and death of Saul and Joe Nathan. That's very interesting, but I wouldn't stay there because I ain't gonna study war no more. There come a time in your life you have to make some changes, amen. I would go to Mount Hermon, a mountain which formed the northern boundary of the country beyond Jordan, rises over 9,000 feet above sea level. It melting snow formed the main source of Jordan River. That's probably the reason why they say Jordan River is, is chilly and cold. The writers say, say chill my body but not my soul. And it is also probably the mountain on which Jesus was transfigured when Peter, James, and John got so happy and overwhelmed and say, Lord, it's good uh, to be here. Amen. I would have liked to stay there, you know, but things seem to get better. Amen. But I would go to a place very familiar with the Bible reader and the scholars. I would go to Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, uh, upon which God met Moses and give him, amen, and God's people, amen, the Ten Commandments. Very significant. How Moses communed with God 
and God communed with Moses. That's so marvelous. But I, I wouldn't stay there. What I would do, y'all, I would make my way. I would move on over into the church age. That's the new age. Amen. There come a time where you have to move from one stage to the next stage. Uh, what we call moving from glory to glory. Uh, amen. The age where I say new life began. Mm. That's, that's the age where evil and good finally, amen, met head on. And you know what happened. <clears throat> amen. Good always went out over evil. Uh, you may have to go through some hard time. Mm, uh, you may have to cry sometime. Uh, uh, amen. Praise God. Life was always not, don't always be sunshine. Uh, amen. Everything don't always glitter uh, in life. There are some tears that have to be shed. Somebody say, I got a few more. Uh, Tears to shed. Uh, I got a few more mountain uh, to climb. Uh, amen. When the tour is finished, if the Lord will ask me, uh, say, Brother Gamma, which one of these mountains you would like to stay close to? Uh, hear what I would tell them, y'all. Uh, you could have uh, Mount Carmel. Uh, you can have Mount Ebel. Uh, you could have Mount Gerizim. Uh, you could have Mount Golta. Uh, Goldborn. Uh, here what you could have uh, all the other mountains. Uh, but here what I want you to do for me uh, in my life. Uh, where I stand now, uh, lead me. Uh, lead me uh, to Calvary. Uh, amen, Calvary. Uh, is a place, uh, amen, uh, where everything changed. Uh, caring uh, wasn't always caring, uh, but since Jesus uh, went to Calvary, uh, amen, it changed uh, the complete outcome. Uh, it changed the name. Uh, glory to God. Uh, amen, you could have all the other mountains. Uh, lead me uh, to Calvary. Uh, let me tell you about Calvary. Uh, Calvary uh, had such great effect uh, and had brought so many great changes uh, in people's lives, uh, your life uh, and my life, uh, until the hymnologist wrote, uh, say, King of my life, uh, I crown thee now. Uh, thine shall thy glory be, unless I forget thy throne crown brow. Uh, lead me lead me lead me to Calvary there's another hymnologist it had such great effect on him until he said amen at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden and the burden have you ever uh, had any burden uh, and the burden uh, of my heart uh, of my heart uh, have you ever had any burden uh, you could stand and be a witness uh, like the hymn just said uh, if you had any burden uh, he's had the burden uh, and the burden uh, of my heart uh, roll away uh, it was there uh, by faith uh, that I received uh, my sight uh, and the burden, uh, and the burden, uh, I was weighted down, uh, and the burden uh, of my heart, uh, they roll away, uh, and now uh, I'm happy uh, all the day long. Uh, lead me, uh, lead me, uh, lead me. Uh, you can have uh, all the other mountain, uh, but lead me, uh, lead me, uh, lead me, uh, lead me. Uh, Lead me uh, to Calvary. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day long. That's the sermon. Amen.
King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall thy glory be, lest I forget. Thy throne crown bow. Lead me, lead me, church. You could have all the other mountain, every place you go, but lead me to Calvary. Calvary, it was there that all my burden, all my burden, my sin was washed away. My burden was lifted. Have you any mountain? Have you any burden that seems impossible? God, Calvary, it was at Calvary. Jesus died. On that third day, he was resurrected. They thought it was over. The devil thought it was all over. But the third day, he was resurrected with all power, all power given in heaven and earth. All power. He said, my, all power is in my hand, and I give to you the same power. So there is solutions to every problem in God's word. Whatever you're going through, whatever you face, whatever you will face, God got the answer. He's the answer to all of my problems. So I give them all. I give them all. I cannot handle it by myself. Amen. The burden is too heavy. God, he the one that lifts my burden. Look what you let him lift your burden? Would you let them solve your problem? You cannot fix it by yourself. It's too big for you. You got to give it to him. At that cross, I will repeat, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart, it rolled away. It was there by faith. It got to be by faith. By faith and repentance. Amen. Then you could receive your sight. Somebody say, I was blind, but now I see. Amen. I was blind. Let him lift. He'll lift your burden. Yes. Whatever problem you're going through. Amen. No matter how bad it seems, no matter how dark it is, he will turn your night into day. That's what God will do. What's impossible for man it's possible for them that, that believe in God. God is the one that will lift your burden. He will lift it. And that writer sing again, he's on a hill far away. Stood the old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And he said, oh, I love that old cross where the dearest and best. For a world of lost sinner was slain. Oh, I love that old cross. And so I will cherish. I will cherish it. I didn't know it before, but I will cherish that old rugged cross now. Because in there, there's life. Amen. There's life. There's peace. There's joy. There's happiness. There's understanding. Amen. Oh, I love it. Amen. Yes. Yes. It was a bloody Friday afternoon. But when he died and was resurrected, Oh, my God. He turned it into a new life for you and I. So why don't you, today, why don't you come to him? That's why they make that say, come to Jesus right now. Come to him. I found no other way, no other solution. Somebody said, I tried, and I tried, and I just couldn't seem to solve it. So I, 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 so I cried until I find the Lord. Yeah. God sometimes allow trouble to come to help us to recognize that he is the problem solver. Would you let him today? Is there someone on the line? You may be on the line. You may want to just come to Jesus. See, it's not a one-time thing because the devil won't shoot a one-time problem out. He always throwing stuff at you. Amen. He always throwing snowball at you. But sometimes we get so bogged down, we don't know that it's a snowball. We don't know that God could solve every problem up. Amen. God can solve anything. He did it at Calvary. And he died and was resurrected. And he said, all power. Amen. Whose side are you on? Whose side are you going to lean on? Amen. I believe I lean on Jesus' side. Amen. All the significant places and they have in life. I believe I'll choose Jesus. Jesus is my choice. I'll take him as my choice. 
He is my choice. He's my number one choice over everything else in life. Would you take him? Would you receive him today? Would you give him your problem? He can solve it. He's a problem solver. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. That's who Jesus is. Amen. The devil don't want the word to come out. He never would want something significant. The devil always throwing these, what, the filibuster, fuzz buster, every other kind of buster in our path. But if I were you, I would choose this day. Amen. Just said, choose. Choose who you going to serve. Amen. Whether it be that other God who was killing you before, or would it be the God of life where you will choose? Will it? I'm going to give an offer today before we close the line. You may on, be on the line now. We don't have to make it this uh, uh, a big old thing, but let me, if anyone on this line, if you choose, you want to this, this go all in with God. If you're on this line, if you've been trying everything else and getting beat down and nothing will work, you can choose today. You could just open your phone and say, okay, I will. Just open your phone. We're going to pray for you. If all the people I ever know that really wanted God, they come publicly. They, wasn't, they didn't care. See, when your problem gets so big, when the problem gets so heavy and hard, you don't care who know it. Man, Pastor. You don't care who know it. All you have to do is say, come to Jesus. And I know you've been hearing that all your life. Will it be one now? Just hit your phone and say, here am I. We're going to pray for you. If you're willing to do that, guess what? Something's going to be done. See, it all first come with personal commitment. That's where it comes from. Without that, Everybody come, all of my knowing about, they come publicly. The first sign is repentance. When I find out where I'm wrong, I'm ready to repent quick. Because I don't want, the Bible said, let nothing steal your salvation. Nothing. Don't nothing. let the devil steal it. And he, he's a thief and a robber. He come to steal, kill, and rob. Amen. Amen. That's why I took a panoramic a view of the different mountain and I get back to Calvary. Calvary is the place where it all come to head. It come to head right there. That was the turning point. Would you want a turning point in situations now in your life? Anything you're wrestling with, whatever it is, you can come. Let us, I, I want to pray. Amen. If you would, anyone else on here, if you would. Father, we thank you for your word, uh, for the revelation in your word, for the revelation is huge. The time does not even justify, for your word is huge. So, for, oh God, you bigger than time, because you make the time. Thank you, your people that heard your word, that their heart was touched in this situation. Lord, we think, and I ask you to, to help me to be able to deliver what you had given because there's deliverance in your word, there's life in your word. Oh God, we move from glory to glory. The devil is out to kill, steal, and rob, but you come that we'll have life and you will have life more abundantly. Oh God, we thank you for the day, your word. Thank you for those that heard your word. Thank you for what it's doing, oh God. Oh God, let it Oh God, create a right spirit, like David said, in me. Let it create a, the right mind, renew in me, Lord, the mind. We thank you. Bless your people this morning in a very, whatever they're going through situation, you able to do exceeding and abundant and above all, we could ask to think according to the power of our faith in us. Faith, oh God, move mountains we thank you for that now now you bless your people and what you have done way back on calvary oh god to set us free help us to receive your love help us to receive what you have done oh god we love you we bless you we thank you for that 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Don't forget, you can help us continue to spread the good news by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's PIBC, Pentecost Inspirational Baptist Church. Like, follow, share, and subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed week.